Exercise 23. This is our third sheet metal exercise and it's going to deal with cylinders. To begin, we're going to go ahead and start by drawing out a center line, a vertical center line, and then a, a circle, actually a, an arc using three point, our center point arc. So we go to File, New, and I'm going to select my ANSI inch part. And then we could go ahead and select the front plane and start our sketch. First thing is you select the center line tool. From the origin, drag out a vertical center line. The next thing you do is you go to the arc tools and find center point arc. Find the center or the origin here, click and drag out what looks like a circle, release it, and then click again to complete your center point arc. If, you, if you're not getting the full arc, just rotate it 180 degrees and back around. If I'm in, at this time I'm still holding my pointer down. And then click to release it so you have a little opening at the top. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and add the dimensions to this. And it's going to be 2.5 for the radius. And then dimension between, uh, actually before you dimension between these two, it's a good idea to actually hold control and select the two points and the center line. And you'll find symmetric. And I, I was holding control while I did that. So now I've added a symmetric relationship. So they're centered. And then add a dimension of 0 0.001. So there's a tiny little gap. This is so we can make it into a sheet metal part. So now we could go over here. Uh, actually, we go to um, Features and Extrude Boss Base. And we could put in the thickness that we want. In this case, if we're following the manual, it's going to be um, 60 thousandths thick. And the thickness is going to be on the outside. So we could hit um, under Thin Feature here, 0.06. 0.25 for the length of the extrusion and we'll keep it blind and we'll just reverse the uh, direction of the thin feature and hit the green check mark. Okay. And so now we can see um, we have a, a ring. It's not sheet metal yet though. Now to turn it into a sheet metal part we just select one of the edges here at the top and then find, and that's for a fixed edge, so basically everything will unfold from that edge that we selected. So depending upon, you might want to zoom up and grab the edge that you need to. In this case it doesn't matter though. And then we just go to insert bends and leave all the settings the same. Just hit the green check mark to apply. The next step is we go ahead and we just go to flatten. So we could go ahead and flatten it out. And here we can see it's flattened out our part. And that's how you make a sheet metal cylinder. Now if you need to add some sort of features in here, while it's flattened you could do that. You could select this face, start a sketch, and I'm going to draw a series of circles here. So I'm going to use the circle tool, draw a circle, and I'm going to go to insert, actually tools, sketch tools, linear pattern. And in the x-axis I'll go ahead and I'll add a distance gap of maybe one inch and then we'll fill the slots up about 15 fit in there and then the y-axis will add three and we'll distance gap them at approximately 0.7 and hit apply. Now we can just go to features extrude cut and link to thickness. Now if we go ahead and hit the flatten icon again it should flatten up or fold up with our holes in position and the holes sure enough actually indicate the the bend in there and that's it for that exercise the next exercise that I'd like to show is how to create a cone this is exercise for 24 and we'll make a conical sheet metal form and put some text on it. This is a little bit different 
than the last one in that we actually make a full circle at 2.5 and extrude it. So we'll go to File, New. We'll select the front plane, start our sketch, and we draw a circle. And we'll just dimension that at 0.25 or 2.5 diameter. Now we could go to Features, Extrude Boss, 0.25 or um, 2.5, and then Add Draft. And in this case, we want to add 13 degrees of draft. The next step is to shell it. So we go now to the shell command and we'll make it 0 0.06. Select the front face and the back face to shell and hit apply. Now that it's hollow, we can now select the front plane again and start a sketch on it. And you probably want to go normal too. At this point, again, just like the last exercise, we draw a center line. The next step is to just draw an ordinary line on one of the sides at a slight angle. Hit escape and group select both entities and find the mirror entities icon. Okay, get these on the edge and now add a dimension between the two. And in this case the dimension is going to be 0.001. hit apply and now we could go to features extrude cut now it's kind of hard to tell what it's going to cut here unless we zoom up in this case I think the arrow here indicates it's going to cut everything on the outside and leave us with that little sliver so we don't want that we could actually flip it by clicking on the arrowhead or you could hit the reverse button um, flip side to cut over here hit the green check mark to apply and now we cut in a little sliver out of there. Now we could go ahead and select the edge, go to insert bends, and basically the same routine as last time. You can leave it all alone because it already has those things applied to it. And let's go ahead and flatten it using the flatten icon. Okay. Now to add text to this or some sort of feature, we could select this face, start our sketch. I'm going to select this bottom edge and I'm going to offset it. And the reason for this is so I have something to draw on or put my lettering on. So I'm going to offset about a half inch into the part and then be sure to select it and turn it to construction geometry by selecting the little checkbox on the left after it's selected. If it's solid geometry it will error out. So if you get any errors this is probably the culprit. Just click on it, turn on for construction over here on the left. It has to have, be a dashed line. Now we could select that and we could go to Tools, Sketch Entities, Text. Now the text in this case, we'll go ahead and we'll just put in, um, just put in C O D. Oops. Got it backwards there. And now we could actually select from this grouping here. We have Center Align. You could span it out crosshair but we don't want that. You could justify left or right. You could flip it upside down, inside out. Or in this case what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to turn off use document font and choose my own font, a much larger one in this case. And uh, don't go with anything terribly complex as it might be difficult for it to cut it out. But um, So I'm going to go with the regular don't use bold don't use bold italicize. Those are two options that will intersect when they create the bold geometry and it won't cut properly. Okay, as for points, I'm going to make this very large. I'll make it 72 points. And then over here, as soon as I hit OK, I have the ability to adjust the spacing, spread them out a little bit. And I could even stretch them out a little bit. Now I could go ahead and cut this. So I go to Features. Well, actually, I have first have to apply under Sketch here. And I could go to Extrude Cut and Link to Thickness and hit Apply. Now here we get a little message. It says Bodies to Keep. And we have All Bodies or Selected Bodies. Uh, let's keep all the bodies and I'll show you what that is. Basically, there's separated bodies here. There's this 
and this body that are separate. Notice there's nothing connecting them to the main body. So we have to add our own little connections to that. And the way you do that is you just select this face, start a sketch, and find parallelogram. We could select that. The reason we select a parallelogram is because if you select a rectangle and draw it, remember this is at an arc. Our rectangles go horizontal and vertical only, so they're going to look real funny versus parallelogram. You could draw it out and make it more controlled, just like that. And so you can kind of follow the arc that's on here versus having it just vertical or horizontal. And you'll see if you tried it. Okay, now we just hit apply. We go to features, extrude boss. Now SOLIDWORKS with its infinite wisdom, unfortunately when you extrude something off of a solid model it tries to extrude away from it not knowing that you actually want it to intersect necessarily. So in this case you can select link to thickness but you also have to hit reverse direction so it goes into the part otherwise the lay it rest on top and it will error out. Hit the apply button. Now you can see those are being held in there by those little notches that we've put in. And now we can fold it up. And here you can see it in its rolled up state or flattened state. And that is how you create a conical sheet metal part. Now, the next exercise I don't actually have written out as a lesson, but it's actually using the lofted sheet metal part. So this would be from going from a rectangle to a circle, like for air ducting and things like that. So let's go to New. And for this, I'm going to select the front plane and draw a sketch. And I'm going to draw in a rectangle. We'll use a center rectangle. Okay. And then go ahead and select the top line of this rectangle and delete it. And then draw in your own lines. And do not connect them. Leave them open at the center. Again, you could put in a dimension in here. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and now we're done. We could go ahead and hit rebuild and now we need to offset the front plane. So I could select the front plane, hold control, drag a plane forward. Approximately I'll drag this one about um, four inches. And now we'll start sketching on that new plane. We'll go normal too. And in this case we'll use the center point arc again to make a little opening so we'll click drag this up here drag it around and then get these close together again you can use a little trick as you saw in the earlier uh, video to make a little gap get a little closer I'm not putting dimensions in on this one but you could if you wanted to hit rebuild again and now here we have on the sheet metal tools lofted bend select the lofted bend, select the profiles near the similar points where they would start and stop. Oh, in this case it wants fillets. Um, let's cancel this for a second. We'll go back to this and edit the sketch. Just make sure you put in sketched fillets. I'll make them maybe a half inch. Just select the corners, hit apply hit rebuild and now we can retry that. So lofted bend, select here and select over here and you can see how it transitions between the two and there's a little gap. Hit the apply button. You can hide this and there you have your sheet metal part. If we flatten it out you can see it in its flattened state or its folded state. And that finishes this final exercise for sheet metal.